thank you very much ladies and gentlemen for uh, inviting me uh, so my topic today is difficult to treat urological infections so first i'll start with defining the urological infections in uh, microbiologist point of view so that includes the infections of urinary tract in both sexes and infection of the male reproductive structures inclusive of all accessory glands so there are many such urological infections varying from asymptomatic bacteriuria uncomplicated cystitis to complicated cystitis urosepsis catheter related uti whole lot of things including uh, genital urinary tuberculosis so they become difficult when the usual treatment options were no longer helpful to alleviate these infections so let's look at the factors which leads to this failure of response or the factors which cause difficulty in treatment first one is when you get an infection in a structurally abnormal system so the infection become difficult to treat so then again likewise functionally abnormal system when the infection occur in a functionally abnormal system again the infection become uh, difficulty to treat when involvement of multi drug resistance extensive drug resistance so pan drug resistant pathogens in etiology the infection become difficult to treat then other thing is where the infections you require extended period of antibiotics and also uh, infections where you need adjunctive uh, procedures like surgical procedures so insertion of various type of tubes in order to achieve cure so that will again become a uh, difficulty to treat infection so then the other thing is the infection caused by atypical organisms or infections caused by tuberculosis you know uh, it is very common in this part of the world although we are not uh, thinking it in the first instance then the most important thing in the perspective of microbiologist is involvement of biofilm biofilm infections so those are the factors which have led to uh, difficulty in treatment of this thing so i have selected four five such difficult to uh, treat infections for today's discussion asymptomatic bacteriuria in adults recurrent urinary tract infection in females the lower urinary tract infections urosepsis bacterial prostatitis and tb of the genital urinary tract asymptomatic bacteriuria in adults especially females so although this is not difficulty to treat infection so this has been involved in lot of irrational prescription of antimicrobials so i have decided to include this in this discussion because that is directly contributory to uh, antibiotic stewardship programs so definition of asymptomatic bacteriuria is isolation of significant number of bacteria so that is we all know more than 10 to the power 5 colony forming units per ml by a midstream sample from an asymptomatic adult so we need to have at least two urine cultures for females and also one culture from adult male if we were to call it as asymptomatic bacteriuria remember now these individuals are asymptomatic so we are uh, isolating them we are finding uh, the bacteria on routine culture asymptomatic bacteriuria are not generally considered difficult to treat infections and i have included this because this is one of the commonest instances where antibiotics were misused so if you go through uh, the prescription sheets in hospitals you might find uh, prescribing with this extended spectrum of antimicrobials especially extended uh, end of life sort of antimicrobials most of the time for these uh, reports most patients with asymptomatic bacteriuria will not have any adverse outcomes as a result of asymptomatic bacteriuria so therefore no need to worry about that you can just ignore it uh without uh, embarking on treatment and 
available most guidelines the guidelines if you take european or american guidelines they do not endorse at least screening for asymptomatic bacteria forget about the treatment so here you can see uh, european association of uh, urological surgeons guidelines all does not endorse at least screening or treatment so okay, women without risk factors patients with well regulated diabetes postmenopausal women elderly institutionalized patients patients with dysfunctional or reconstructed lower urinary tract patients with renal transplants so the strength of evidence is very strong not to screen or not to embark on treatment on these categories antibiotic treatment is not significantly beneficial so although how much ever you try to embark on treatment it is not useful even in patients who have undergone renal transplant the only instance where treatment of asymptomatic bacteria seems to be useful is in pregnancy because there had been very high chances of preterm deliveries and maternal complications in patients with asymptomatic bacteria who were diagnosed during pregnancy therefore other than that indication almost all other indications are against using antimicrobials in asymptomatic bacteria the most important thing about treating asymptomatic bacteria is because its contributory contribution to uh, development of antimicrobial resistance among uropathogenic uropathogenic bacteria so we are seeing now most of our uh, hospital patients who are on catheters and different procedures so they tend to have lot of resistant microorganisms which may be due to partly due to treatment of these cases so my second selected uh, difficult to treat uh, urogenital so uh, urological infection is recurrent urinary tract infections so when you are defining recurrence we have to have at least 3 urinary tract infections per year or 2 urinary tract infection within last 6 months so when you have that uh, closest uh, conforming so you can call them recurrent urinary tract infection so you can get recurrent ur recurrent urinary tract infection in both lower urinary tract and upper urinary tract so sorry so generally the upper urinary tract infections when it comes recurrent so you need a different workout but here i am focusing on urinary tract lower urinary tract recurrent urinary tract infections so how do we diagnose number 1 as usual we have to embark on culture and there is no need for extensive workout like cystoscopy or imaging in patients who are coming with recurrent lower uh, urinary tract infections but if you have any any suspected atypical cases uh, extensive uh, of recurrent urinary tract infection you might have to engage in extensive workup like looking for renal calculi or any other outflow tract obstruction or interstitial cystitis or sub suspected malignancies so how are we going to manage and follow up these patients with recurrent urinary tract infection so number one thing that we see is prevention of recurrent urinary tract infection so that most guidelines endorsed on preventive aspects so you might have to counsel the patient to uh, sensitize the patient on risk factors and then engaging in non antimicrobial measures and some individuals may require antimicrobial prophylaxis and all risk factors the urological risk factors has to be identified and managed according to the guidelines and if there is any evidence of residual volume you know when there is residual volume there there tend to be it tend to get infected so therefore that need to be address behavioral modifications and non antimicrobial prophylaxis may play an active role in management of recurrent lower urinary tract infections so let's see what are the options the antimicrobial prophylaxis options available to prevent recurrent urinary tract infection so we can institute either constitu uh, continuous low dose antimicrobial prophylaxis or normal dose post coital prophylaxis so you can give it for a longer duration low dose or normal doses post coital antibiotic prophylaxis is found to be the most 
effective approach in preventing recurrent urinary tract infection. So, regimes we can select nitrofurantoin 50 milligrams or 100 milligram once a day, phosphomycin which is not registered I think in Sri Lanka under NMRA. So, 3 grams every 10 days, trimethoprim uh, in our setup this although this is registered trimethoprim alone is very costly. So, it is 100 milligram once daily. So, then you can go for first generation cephalosporins like cephalexin or cefaclo. 125 milligram daily, 250 milligram daily, or kefaclo 250 milligram once daily. So those are the. Uh, so here is the, uh, the evidence summary. So you can see diagnosis of urinary tract infection, recurrent urinary tract infection by culture. There are strong evidence to say, and using non-antimicrobial approach in postmenopausal women to prevent recurrent urinary so Again, strong evidence exists. So, again okay, here uh, immunoactive prophylaxis again strong evidence use of continuous or postcoital antimicrobial prophylaxis to prevent recurrent UTI uh, again there are strong evidence to support that practice. For patients with good compliance uh, self administered so short term antimicrobial uh, therapy should be considered again that is a strong evidence to support. So, let us move to the next difficult to treat uh, urological infection that is urosepsis. We all know urosepsis is a life threatening infection originating from urinary tract and here the pathology is due to uh, invasion of organisms from urinary tract into bloodstream or uh, spilling of toxic effect of the microorganisms into general circulation and urosepsis is associated with cytokine storm and the patients go into shock. Urosepsis blood cultures, so other than urine culture you have to embark on blood cultures because most of the time the organisms which causing urosepsis we may be able to uh, isolate from blood. Urosepsis can be either community acquired, so the patients comes with urosepsis to the hospital or it can be hospital acquired where following a procedure, maybe surgery or instrumentation, so they can get urosepsis. So let us say what are the etiological agents, so generally in our setting it is purely gram negative, but worldwide you can get gram positive organisms and fungi or candida or filamentous organisms. In our setting, the major pathogen we have to target in urosepsis, Escherichia coli, Klebsiella pneumoniae, Enterobacter and Pseudomonas aeruginosa, all these organisms are gram negatives. Sepsis originating from urinary tract will have a lower mortality rate than the sepsis originating from other places like bloodstream or pneumonia. So, we can be easily, if you are managing the patients adequately with adequate uh, source reduction, we can get a good outcome of urosepsis. So, let us see how I are going to uh, diagnose urosepsis. So, generally screening has to be done with full SOFA score or Q SOFA score as uh, other cases of sepsis. In addition to that, uh, extensive microbiological workup has to be undertaken. Urine culture, at least two sets of blood culture. So, here I am stressing the need for two sets of blood culture because that will catch the intermittent bacteremia and that will en enhance the positivity rate. Then, and if there is any drainage, maybe collection from internal uh, organs or kidney. So, again we would like to culture it. So, when we are taking any aspirate from internal organs, so if you can incorporate it into a blood culture bottle, the isolation rates will be very high. So, therefore, as a microbiologist, I would appeal to you, if you are aspirating from kidney or bladder or ureter, any, any uh, string, please collect it to a blood culture bottle, so that we will be able to give you a better and a good results within very short time. Imaging again urosepsis, the imaging is very important to identify the area of involvement. Then I would like to talk about the septic screening, the concept of septic screening. So, we all use this term septic screening. So, that includes just 
doing certain blood cult certain cultures maybe tracheal secretions urine culture blood culture or all wounds of this thing so sepsis screening is not that so it involves objective investigation for the focus so that has appropriate test relevant inflammatory markers and also targeted imaging so when you call sepsis screening you have to include all three components so let's see the management of urinary this thing so any thing everything management of sepsis it is same it has two important aspect one is uh, parenteral empiric antimicrobial therapy and the supportive care so and we recommend de escalation so that is you start high and with the time you can gradually come down on antimicrobials or streamline with the antimicrobials with availability of culture reports the antimicrobial selected to treat urosepsis has to have broad spectrum of coverage to cover all potential uropathogens including resistant bacteria choice of bacteria so for community acquired urinary tract infection so urosepsis we have carbapenems and if if there is hospital acquired we can go for carbapenems so something like cholestin or digicycline if the resistance rates are high especially we are looking at carbapenem resistant enterobacteriaceae in addition to that if you don't have any other things so you can go for third generation or fourth generation cephalosporins with aminoglycosides or sometimes uh, uh, broad spectrum anti pseudomonal antibiotics like piperacillin tazobactam or ticacillin clavulanic acid so where how do you select the appropriate treatment so you can go for this the cumulative antibiogram blood antimicrobiogram so periodically we publish these things Uh, so that you can select whatever the antibiotic available for treatment here you can see this according to this uh, for e coli uh, the green color 96% of time is meropenem will be susceptible so then the golden hour of sepsis we all know that in sepsis you have to uh, take actions immediately within the first hour if there is any delay the chances of uh, uh, complications will be higher so if you start treatment early your outcome will be okay this is sepsis management protocol you can see there are two arms one is resuscitation where the intensive support and then the source control source control has two arms identification of the source where you need to investigations and imaging and then the source management it include uh, source control plus empiric antimicrobials so treatment of carbapenem resistant klebsiella pneumoniae so this is a emerging situation in our hospitals where you need to have uh, cholestin with carbapenem or cholestin with tricycline if you are suspecting uh, carbapenem resistant organisms when you are encountering carbapenem resistant organism infection prevention plays a major role so again all these things that i have mentioned will have a strong evidence base according to the guideline bacterial prostatitis then again another uh, atypical course because this needs longer duration of treatment acute bacterial prostatitis usually present abruptly and they can go into sepsis if not managed properly so acute bacterial pro prostatitis and chronic bacterial prostatitis recurrence they will be formed caused by biofilm infection so biofilms Uh, you can't use antimicrobials the routine doses you might have to give increased doses so you might have to add some biofilm sidle antimicrobials to get a good outcome so here so generally we do all test with microbial microorganisms with the planktonic form so that is the individual organisms in the body you can get biofilm infection so therefore we have to be extra careful when you are handling the cases of Uh, acute bacterial prostatitis or chronic bacterial prostatitis so infections related to urinary calculi so and uh, this biofilms normal antimicrobial susceptibility you can't apply because most of the time the biofilm the organisms are clustered together in a glycocalyx so a, a mucoid uh, matrix the antibiotics won't go there most difficult to treat infections are found to be associated with biofilm especially this chronic uh, relapsing infections 
Then the next thing is the genitourinary tuberculosis, again a common thing, but we are not considering in first instance because we are naturally tend to look at the more traditional microbiological pathogens. So, it is one of the commonest extra one third of cases of extra pulmonary TB is genitourinary tuberculosis and we do not know the burden and we have to have uh, this included as a, one of the uh, differential diagnosis when we are investigating uh, a difficult to treat uh, or infections. So, then diagnosis of genitourinary TB again there has to be a history. Uh, around 50 percent of the cases there will be a history of uh, pulmonary TB, other 50 percent there is no uh, history as such. So, then you have to investigate it objectively in order to identify the pathogens. So, AFB smear you can do with semen or prostate after prostatic massage, urine three cultures early morning. So, they have a higher uh, specificity and sensitivity and urine culture you can do uh, for AFB and because this, this is delayed we need to uh, go for nucleic acid amplification test. So, you can do this gene expert uh, on urine sample or other samples. Again histology treatment wise uh, you can go for traditional 6 month treatment regime or if you are suspecting resistant TB you may have to give uh, to continue antimicrobials for longer time and surgical treatment where appropriate. So, this uh, difficulty to treat urological infection is uh, di very difficult to define because it depends on uh, your management uh, and asymptomatic bacteriuria in adults do not need uh, this thing, urosepsis, uh, timely antimicrobial treatment and other source management are necessary. So, culture still holds a mainstay when you are managing difficulty to uh, manage uh, treat, uh, ur uh, urological infections. So, if it is, if you find it difficulty to uh, manage, please ask for help and we are here to help you so that we will be having, we can uh, do a multidisciplinary uh, involvement of patients. So, infections will no longer be difficulty to manage. Thank you very much.